So, the topic for this month, since it is what? The love month. The topic for this month is all about love. Now, you may have asked this question or pondered, you know, this uh, thought. Like, what is love? What is true love? What is the difference between I love my dog and then I love my spouse? And what is the difference between I love the ministry and I love my children? And sometimes love, if we're not clear with the definition of love, love can compete with each other, yes? Yung ipapakain mo sa anak mo, papakain mo na lang sa aso mo. Hindi pwede, di ba? Because it cannot compete. There's levels of love. So maybe you have this question in your mind or you have this desire in your mind that you, are, you, really know, you really want to know what love is. Yes? And you want someone to show it to you. I want to know what love is. <laughs> you know, we're going to go through that. We're going to define some of the things, but it will take a little time because we really, you know, love is such a big, big, big concept. So now, I want you to look at this. That the topic for today is all about love. If we have no clear understanding of what love is, then we will draw it from what the world is telling us about love. If you do not have a clear definition of what love is, then you will base it on what? You will base it on social media. You will base it on influencers then the definition of love becomes what? Becomes muddled. It becomes unclear. And so everybody that says, oh, I love this, I love that, then your definition of love becomes what? Becomes very, very shallow. So we need to have a clear definition of what true love is. And that's the reason why what we're going to be talking about today is really God's love for us. It all starts with the love of God. Unless we understood the love of God, we will never be able to love other people, including our spouse, even our children. So I want you to do this. We need to understand what? Our vertical relationship with God. Can we all do this? Vertical relationship. Vertical muna. Vertical relationship. You need to draw love from God, understand God's love, be immersed with God's love. In fact, the picture of this is that, have you ever gone through a waterfall? Like, like, you know, like talagang yung buhos. Like, ah, sarap, di ba? Buhos the waterfall. That is a picture of God's love. That is a picture of God's love. Now, you have the vertical relationship, and then what you need to do? Since you're so full of God's love, you now can love other people. Can we all do this? Vertical, a uh, horizontal relationship. Yeah, let other people know the vertical relationship. Let them feel. Let them feel it. Do it. Like, smother their face. Because that is God's love for us. God's love is just so overwhelming. Do you want to be overwhelmed with God's love? So that's our, that's our topic for today. I, for me, I want to be overwhelmed by God's love. So the topic is God's greater love for us. So I've asked this question. How do I know if what I'm feeling is true love? Ethan, how do you know if what you're feeling is true love? Richard, how do you know if what you're feeling is true love? Different types of love. All right. Different types of love. So here we go. What's the different types of love? Anybody here, do you, do you know the different kinds of love? How many kinds of love is there? Five? Very good. Who else? Most evangelical believers would say three, Right? Eros, philo, uh, philo, and agape, right? But let me show you that there are different kinds of love, and I don't think this is even, even all of it, right? Number one, eros. It is a sexual passion. It is natural for men and women to experience this kind of love. But if this is expressed outside 
the boundaries of marriage, then it can be a negative thing. All right? It is a carnal desire for another person's physical body. Very, very carnal. It's so carnal, I can't show you the PowerPoint. Carnal kasi. Next. Next is what? Ludus. Ludus is the game or play. It is a playful kind of love. Ito yung, uh, ito yung uh, how do you say it? Yung, uh, when you are flirting with another person, hindi ka naman serious eh. So, when Lisa saw me, I asked her, are you, do you just love me because you're flirting with me? Are you trying to, are you trying to, uh, you know, I, my heart is very, very sensitive, all right? My feeling is very, very sensitive. It's aimless because you're just playing. It's laughable. That's where we get the word ludicrous. Is it ludicrous? Ludicrous. You know the rapper? It's, it's laughable. It's not, it's not serious. Next. What is next? Mania. WrestleMania. It's obsessive and what? Compulsive. Destructive love. An example of this is actually, you know, when you have mania, you become a maniac. Uh, it, it leads to, if, if not checked, it can lead to a mental illness. You are so engrossed with love for somebody that you're jealous. Everything that, that happens or everybody that approach your wife, approach your husband, or approach your, 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 the one that you're your crush, you get, you get annoyed. You get jealous. This is the kind of love that leads rapists to rape somebody. It is not true love, by the way. This is what happened. A picture of this in the Old Testament would be the son of David, Ammon, when, uh, when he tried to court, quote-unquote, at first, he said he was so in love with Tamar, he's so thinking about Tamar, he was love sick about Tamar, but then it is actually a, a mania kind of love. And the moment she wa he was able to get what he wanted from Tamar, ayaw na sa kanya and she rejected Tamar. That is the kind of love that is not, not true. And women, be careful about this kind of love. Men, be careful about this kind of love. You really want a love that is the God kind of love. And we'll talk about that later. Now, there's another one. That is uh, a love that is uh, different naman. Itong uh, uh, ludus also. Ludus is yung play lang. A picture of it is also in the Old Testament when Judah played with a harlot. Sino yung harlot? Do you remember? Anybody here? I can't go through the, the story. So with, with, with Ammon, it was what? It was with whom? It was with? Huh? Tamar. With Judah, it was also with Tamar din. So, kawawa nga yung pangalan Tamar. I was looking at it, kawawa naman to si Tamar. Siguro wala masyadong ginagawa sa bahay to, kaya Tamar. <laughs> no, but then, you know, in Matthew 1.3, I was looking at it, Lord, I, I don't want to ever name my daughter Tamar, but but I have good news for you. If your name is Tamar, if you're watching right now, God redeemed the name Tamar. Why? Because the bloodline of Jesus includes that prostitute. Isn't God amazing? The, well, she was not really a prostitute, but she prostituted herself to get what she want. It was a game for both Judah and for Tamar. All right, so now, let's look. The next kind of love is what? I, I don't know how to say this. Phila, phila, philautia, self-love. Philautia is what? Self-love. What is that? It, it refers to a person who views himself uh, as somebody. It's not necessarily bad, by the way. It's a self-love. You love yourself. The Bible says you should love your wife as you love yourself. It's not necessarily bad. But if you elevate your love for yourself over others, then it becomes a negative thing. All right? So in the modern context, it's viewed positively. But actually, in the, in the 
old context, it's always viewed negatively. So there is always a duality between self-love and if it, if it is not checked, it can lead to narcissism. All right. Yan, yan. Now, next is pragma, the practical love. Are you familiar with this? The practical love. Like, okay, you're marrying somebody out of convenience. You're marrying somebody because of the money or the power or the connection. It's, it's the kind of love that we see in, uh, you know, sadly, in the olden times, it's very, very usual, common. Even now, it's quite, it's quite you know, it's still there in arranged marriages for political or financial reasons. It is a business transaction. This is where we get the word pragmatic. All right? You don't want to be married to somebody who loves you just for your money or loves you just for your influence. All right? And then you have this uh, storge kind of love. This is familiar love. This is your love for your what? For your family members, especially your children. The love of the father to, to his child. The love of the mother to his child. It's storge. Ang bigat nito. Ito, ito. Ang hirap, ang hirap tibagin yan. Storge. This is the easiest love to, to understand because you have an emotional connection and you can relate to this. Yes? This is also the kind of love that you have for your siblings. This is the kind of love that you have for your cousins if you're really close with your cousins. I believe this is also the kind of love that we have for each other in the church. If you are part of the community, this is the kind of love. I've seen this kind of love here. And then you have the philia. Uh, we're familiar with this, yes? Affectionate love. This is your love for a friend. It is not sexual, but it is a love for a friend. It is, it is the type of love that transcends time or even places. Like it doesn't, it doesn't wane. Uh, Attorney Banjo was mentioning to me, he, he, he has a friend that they write since elementary. When he went to the States, actually it's Pastor JP, we, when he went to the States, they would write letters to each other. Can you imagine that? I don't think I've ever written a letter to a friend. Uh, text, yes, but not letters. So they will send each other letters. And that's the kind of love that he has. Actually, you see, Attorney Banjo, he has very, 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 he applies this to all his friends. Uh, sometimes we will bike. Kahit sa kami magbike. Pag sa kanto, may sisigaw dyan, Banjo! Misa magtatago na nga ako eh. Baka kasi kalaban niya sa kaso eh, or what eh. Pero kaibigan pala niya. Every time, anywhere we go, everybody knows him because he's a close friend. He's a, he's a really good friend. A good example of this is actually Jonathan and David. In 1 Samuel, even uh, Jonathan said that his soul was knit to David and Jonathan loved him as himself. Again, this is a good kind of love, but if it is, if it is, if you're, in a filial love with somebody who is not following the Lord, it can be dangerous. Because may soul ties na dito eh. Right? In all those kinds of love, there, there can be soul ties. Pero specifically in filia, if you're not with friends, with, with good people, then it, it, they can lead you into bad, bad things. And then this is the love that we're going to be focused on for this whole month, the agape kind of love. What is this kind of love? It is the God kind of love. It is unconditional. It is sacrificial. It is the kind of love that is willing to do anything, give up everything for a, another person without anything in return. It is so selfless that it can extend not only to relatives and friends, but even to strangers and what? Enemies. Is it possible for you to love an enemy? Well, philia won't cover it. Eros definitely won't cover it, but agape can cover it. C.S. Lewis described this as the gift love. I would say the grace love, the highest form of love. So, greater love has no one than this. So, the topic for this whole month, because it is a love month, we will, our topic is about greater love. Can we all say greater love? I want you to experience greater love. Can, can you tell your statement? Can you tell to yourself, I want to experience greater love. If you really want to know what love is, God will show you. He will show you. He showed you, in fact. 
Greater love has no one than this, than one laid down his life for his friends. I've got good friends who would die for me and I have good friends uh, that I will die for them too. That's the kind of love that God is wanting us to experience. The God kind of love. By the way, this God kind of love, even if you don't experience the other kinds of love, it is more than enough. I want you to know, if you're single right now, unless you have experienced the agape kind of love, you will not find this in, in people unless that person is really in love with the Lord. But for you to experience the true love and for you to filter what true love is before engaging in somebody, you need to be really, really clear that you have experienced, understood the true love of God. Agape love. What is the God kind of love? Agape. It is not based on feelings, emotion, or mood. Minsan, yung, uh, yung, yung love mo for your, what kind of love is that? Your, your love for your relatives? Storge, di ba? Sometimes, you, when you wake up in the morning, and you're not in the mood to love your siblings. Have you ever experienced that? Di ba? Kasi storge why is it? Do you know that true love is tested very early in the morning? Do you know that? Why? Why? Kasi, aga pa eh. So, aga pa eh. <laughs> So now you know, now you know, why. It, will, it will stick to your mind, agape. Agape is a choice. Even early morning. Kahit maaga pa. It is a choice. It is sacrificial. Ano pa? It is unconditional. It is unmerited. You do, the other person don't have to do anything for you to extend unconditional love to that person. It is unmerited. You don't have to count. Oh, sige, pag naka-10 ka sa akin, if you do this for me, if you wash the dishes for me, or, you know, my kids... Okay, I'll wash the dishes uh, on, uh, at dinner. Pero you wash the dishes on pag, uh, ano, pag lunch. And then if they don't do the transaction, then you know they, they get mad at each other. They get angry at each other. But the kind of love is agape. And that is the reason why agape love of God is greater. Because it transcends the limits that we put on our idea of love. Isn't God amazing? Now, why do we, why do we, why do we preach the love of God? Sadly, there are people who say, oh, don't preach God's love. I'm like, what are you thinking? Don't preach God's love too much. What, what do you mean? I, I, I don't get it. That's the only thing we preach here in Live. We preach that God is love. The reason why we preach God's love, because that is God's what? God's nature. It is His essence. And it is His manifestation. God's nature is being manifested, made sure, made true, experienced, delivered to us. In 1 John 4, 7 to 8, most of our talk will be based on 1 John. It's amazing. It's one of the greatest love books because it is, a, it is written by the apostle of love, the love apostle, John. And I believe, just in himself, he truly believes that he is the most loved by Jesus. Well, I have good news for John. Well, I believe that the Lord loves me more than John. I'll clarify this for you. Unless you have really understood God's love, you will not have that feeling that God loves you the most. Have you ever had that feeling? You can only relate to me if you've experienced it. That amongst all the people in the world, I'm loved by God the most. And then when you ask Lisa, she will also say, no, I'm, God loves me the most. And then Ethan would also say, no, God loves me the most. Because we just understood God's love. We're not bragging. We just wanting, that's, that's just how we feel. 
that God really is a God of love and I'm His favorite. We know that God has no favoritism according to the Word of God. But I feel, this is just what I feel, I feel that I'm the exception, that I'm His favorite. No, it's just me. Because I'm Emmanuel, God is with me. But I want you to have that same feeling too. That's the good news. That God loves you the most, that you're the favorite of God. And we will, we will look at why, the reasons why. Okay, beloved, let us love one another for love is from God. You cannot love one another, we cannot love one another if we do not understand that love is from God. If we only understood love on the context of, you know, what other people say on social media, then we will only love other people based on what we know. Based on the limits of the definition of what that social media influencer has said to us. But if you love other people, people based on how God defines it or based on how God is and how He relates with you, then you can easily love other people. And everyone who loves is born of God. Meaning to say, you are incapable of loving the agape kind of love unless you are born of God and unless you know God. Yes? So this kind of love is not based on feeling, emotion, or mood. This kind of love is based on a choice. The choice to be loved by God and the choice to love others. I want you to know that God chose to love you. It is based on His choice too. He could have chosen to just choose one person over the other. Other people think that, you know, even theologians think that God didn't really love everybody. That he didn't really love all the world. He only loved those who he, who he has saved. Then that will, be, that will go against the nature of God. That he said he has no favorites. And God is love. What? God, God is love but he has his only limited love. He has limited his love only to those who are in the church. Then that is not, that is not a good God. That is a wrong Absolutely wrong doctrine and wrong theology. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. And the one who does not love does not know God. For God is love. So vertical relationship has to be clear. You have to really be immersed in the love of God to fully understand how much precious you are in His sight. And how much precious other people also is in His sight. Because if God has loved you based on His definition of love, He must have loved other people too. If He loves your neighbor, then you're supposed to love your neighbor also because you know that God loves them too, yes? The moment you think that God chooses whom He will love, like He loved the church and He doesn't love anybody else, how do you think we would treat that person? you would treat that person as a depraved wretch. <laughs> you have to understand that God loves everybody. But it is the choice of a person to respond to God's love. We'll talk more about this later. God is the standard of love. The next verse is this. The love of God was manifested in us. Can we look at the next verse? Yeah. By this, the love of God was manifested in us that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through Him. So, what do you mean by the love of God manifested? Manifested means to bring out, make known, to expose. You cannot expose something that is not there. Yes? You can only expose something that is already there. What the Bible is saying, that the love of God should be manifested in us. If God's love is there, it should come out. It should be exposed. It should not be hidden. That God has sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. So how do you manifest God's love? By living in victory 
in Jesus. By the way, it says here, we live through Him. It didn't say we live for Him. We live through Him. Living through Him comes first before living for Him. We will not have an ability to live for Jesus unless we have lived through Jesus first. And that is the reason why God is saying, you know, it is not that you love me first. The only reason why you love me because I love you first. Because you have no capacity to love God in the way that He wants to be loved. In the agape love. Yes, we have the capacity for uh, the, the storge love. We have the capacity for uh, the f- uh, philia love. We have a capacity for eros love. But the agape love, God has to give it to you. You have to experience it. In this is love that we love God. Not that we have loved God. That He loved us and sent His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. What does it mean? For us to understand God's love, it is not through our own self-effort. It is through the effort of Jesus. Propitiation means what? He has paid for you and me. He has paid for the sins. The thing that prevents you from experiencing fully the love of God, He paid for it. He took it away. The thing that separates you from God, He took it away. Nailed it on the cross. The thing that makes you feel you're unworthy, He took it away. The thing that that makes you, you know, condemned, self-condemned, He took it away. Nailed it at the cross. So that you will experience the fullness of the love of God. Isn't God's love amazing? And that is the kind of love that God wants to manifest in your life. It wants you to draw it out so that you can draw other people closer to God. Hey, you know what? I have good news for you. That is where, when you share the good news, that is it. I have good, pare, I have good news for you. You have to absolutely know this. Unless you have understood this, you will not be excited about the good news. Because you're so focused on the bad news. But if you understand the good news, all the bad news, it's like nothing. Baliwala. Baliwala. Sarap. Beloved, God so loved us, so we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us and His love is perfected in us. What does this mean? Only by understanding God's love. Again, can we truly love others? Perfected means made complete. All right? It is perfect in your spirit. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. When God gives, it's 100%. You cannot add to it. You cannot subtract from it. It's 100%. He will not, hindi yan dagdag bawi, you know? Pag binigay ni God, binigay niya. Ngayon, ikaw, ano yung i-receive mo sa binigay niyang lahat? Nasa yun. Binigay niyang lahat, pero ang kukunin mo lang is just salvation, then yun lang ang ma-appreciate mo kay God. But if kung binigay niya ang salvation, binigay niya ang healing, binigay niya ang deliverance, binigay niya ang prosperity, then if you receive it all, then you will experience it all. Simple, right? God is not the limit you are. God's love has no limits. If He has poured it upon you, nasaluhin mo lahat hanggang sa kaya mo. Of course, our limited mind. I would say that I don't think we can fully comprehend the love of God. It's just so much. You know, literally our heart would explode. You know, the, the only way for us to really experience the love of God is for us to go to heaven. That, that's when we will see. Love Himself, Jesus Christ. You really want to know what love is? Jesus. You, you see Jesus, boom, that's love. Sarap, grave. And then by this, we know that we abide in Him and He in us. He has given us His Spirit. You know what? Because of the limits of our flesh, the limit of our soul, alam ni God na hindi kayang i-contain ng mind natin eh. Alam ni God na hindi kaya i-contain ng soul natin. So, yung love niya. So, what did He do? He sent His Spirit in our spirit. So that 
we can receive everything that God is giving. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has been given to us. Ephesians 1.3. Where is it? In our spirit. The Holy Spirit is holding it up for us. Isn't God amazing? And now you want to make it manifest in your mind, in your soul. How do you do it? Renew your mind according to the Word of God. And you will know the good, perfect, and pleasing will of God. That's it. Your mind, your mind, God wants your mind to know His perfect, good, pleasing. In other words, acceptable. How do you do it? Well, you open your mind, you change it. Renew your mind and align it with the Holy Spirit. Walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the sins of the flesh. We have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of a few people. No, the world. Kaya kalokohan talaga. For God so loved a few people? Only the chosen? Only the predestined? No. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Other people will argue that the world here is just a people group. Ne, hindi yan the world. It means a people group. Ano ba naman kalokohan yan? What, you're gonna bend doctrines. You're go, actually, you're gonna bend the word of God to fit your doctrine. No. You bend your doctrine. You submit your doctrine. Every knee will bow down, including doctrines, to the word of God. To God Himself. To Jesus. Kalokohan. Baguhin nyo yung doctrine nyo. Mali. I'm sorry, I love you. And if, if, if that doctrine prevents other people from understanding the love of God, then I'm against it. We preach the love of God because whatever comes against you, God's love is greater. Woo! Sarap! Whatever comes against you, God's love is greater. Are you loving our series so far, Greater? Man, God doesn't want you to be limited by the things that are against you. In fact, God said that if God is for you, who can be against you? He's just greater than everything that is against you, including His love. Let's look at God's love letter. I want, this is an illustration I want you to have in your mind. We've used it several times before it was just circumstances up and down. Now, I want you to look at this as these things are your sins. It looks like a big mountain until you see the mountain of God's love that overwhelms all your sins. Tinakpan niya, baliwala yung malilit na mountain compared to the mountain of God's love because God's love is greater than all your sins. What's the proof? 1 Peter 4.8, above all, keep fervent in your love for one another because love covers a multitude of sins. And this talks about the love between brothers in Christ, yes? If the love between brothers in Christ can cover a multitude of sin, how much more the love of God in Christ can cover all sins? Woo! Diba? It covers all your sins. God God's got you covered. Can you tell that to your seatmate? God, you know what? Stop condemning yourself. God's love cover, paid for by the blood of Jesus. Can you, can you tell your seatmate? Stop condemning yourself. Understand God's love. He's got you covered. Okay. What's another proof? God demonstrates, by the way, it's, you know, God, God is a, somebody who is not up there, not involved anymore. He is the one demonstrating. He's, he's actively involved. God demonstrates His own love toward us. He demonstrates. He demonstrates. It's continuous. He demonstrates toward us that while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. When did God choose to love us? Before, while we were still sinning. You know, it's easy to love a person before they were born. Yes? It's easy. It's harder to love a person when, after they were born. And when they were born, it's easier to love a baby than to love a teenager. By the way, I love you, Yeshua. No matter what. You know? So, for me, that's... Yeah. 
I'm talking about other people here, right? Uh, you, Lisa, uh, Yeshua, Isabella, and Yana, and Lisa. All right. Look at this. When did Christ die for us? While we were still sinners. It's amazing, amazing. Does God love sinners? Does God love everybody? It has to be clear because other people think that God loves only those who, he, whom He chose in. How do you know if you're chosen then? That's my question. What if you're not chosen? It's, it goes against God's character. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It doesn't, it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. Look at the next word. Words, much more, greater, much more, much more than having now been justified by His blood. If you believe in Jesus, you are justified by Jesus, by God Himself. Justified means just as if you have not sinned. Your sins, when God sees you, He sees Jesus. As Jesus is, so are you in this world. When God sees you, He sees His Son, Jesus. Woo! Sarap, di ba? God doesn't see me for who I am. God sees me who, for who Jesus is. Sarap justified. Sarap. But does it mean I'm going to go sinning? No! If God sees me as Jesus, I will see myself as how God sees me. Holy blameless, righteous. Therefore, I will walk righteously. I don't see myself a sinner anymore. I'm not a sinner saved by grace anymore. I used to be. When I first started, yes, I was a sinner. He saved me by grace and now I am a saint. And I will treat myself as a saint. Why? Because what do sinners do? They sin. If I see myself as a sinner, I will continue to sin. But if I see myself as a son of God, child of God, then I will walk like a child of God. I will walk like a saint. It all boils down to how you understand your identity. If you think that you're still a depraved wretch, then you will act like a depraved wretch. But if you think that you are blessed, beyond your imagination. Then I will walk a blessed life and I will start blessing others. How can a, how can a depraved wretch bless others? You can't. You're a wretch. You can't give when you feel like you are lacking. How can a broken person lead another person? You can't. You have to be made whole so that you can Help other people reach that place of being made whole in Christ. Very, very basic. The Bible says, Jesus said, how can the blind lead other blind people? How can the broken lead other broken people? Impossible. You have to understand that you have been made whole by Jesus. Claro, grab and sarap nito. Save for... Then having been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through Him. I don't have to be afraid of God's wrath because I'm not part of it. You know, if, if you're into the doom and gloom, I mean, I'm sorry for you. Don't make other people... When you read, when you, when you talk about the end times, and if you're a believer in Christ, it should, you should not be afraid. If there's a preacher that makes you afraid, that means that preacher has not a clear understanding of God's love, of God's greater love. Later on, I will explain more. Because God said, true love casts out all fear because fear involves punishment, torment, the wrath of God. But those who have been perfected in love have nothing to fear. Very, very clear, right? For if while we were still enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, nun ngang tayo'y sinner eh. Nireconcile tayo, minahal tayo ni God. Lalo ngayon, anak ka na niya. Mas mamahalin ka niya, di ba? Ay, uh, how, how much more having been reconciled shall we be saved by His life? His death 
brought us salvation. Brought us reconciliation. Death pa lang yun. E pa paano yung resurrection? His resurrection. The same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the grave, Romans 8 said, what? Will, it's the same Holy Spirit that will raise your body, mortal bodies. Measure, it mentioned there mortal bodies. It didn't say glorified body. It will sustain your mortal body. It's talking about here on earth. God is not angry at you. I want you to know, if you're watching right now, God is not angry at you. God loves you. You cannot manifest love when you're angry. It's at the same. Yes, sir. Where, where does that come from? Like, uh, where does that come from? Uh, God is angry at us. Well, other people think that God is angry because they're stuck in the Old Testament. Do not confuse God's anger to sin to God's anger from God's anger to you. He loves the sinners. And do not confuse that God's anger and His justice. When He declares justice, is it, it is not out of anger. It is out of His righteousness. Divine indignation, yes, is against sin. Divine wrath, the wrath of God is against sin. Now, don't be confused also that when we talk about God's love, it doesn't mean that God is not a judge, that God is not a God of justice, no. But there is a point of justice. There is a specific time for justice to be what? Implemented. Specific justice will be served at a specific time. And that specific time is at the end times. So the reason why we can say that God loves you and not angry at you, because at this moment, this is the time of grace. God wants to call. God does not desire anyone to go to perdition, but for everyone to come to repentance. Now, the question is, Yung bang mga tao gusto nilang lumapit sa repentance? Not everybody. Lahat ba ng tao will receive the love of God? Not everybody. If you do not receive the love of God, then God can't do anything about that anymore. You made your own choice. And so you will face His wrath for sin. And unfortunately, because you have not dealt with your sin through the blood of Christ, you will be included in the wrath of God. Not because He doesn't love you. Oh, you've had more chances to say, no one in hell can say that God doesn't love them. No one. Everyone in hell would have an understanding that they have rejected the love of God in Christ. So the root cause of that is a, a wrong idea that God is ang angry. And they project it to, to, to their siblings they project it to their kids. They project it to other people. It's a wrong theology. That's the root cause. It's a wrong theology. It's an angry theology. It's a broken doctrine. But the love of God makes us whole. That is His... That's the reason why He wants to reconcile us now. Because there will be a point of judgment. Well, when you know when he makes a judgment, that's it. He cannot go against what he said in his word. Save his life. I hope I was able to answer your question, bro. So God's love is greater than your sins. Therefore, it is greater than your greatest fears. You know, tatago tayo sa mountains. But Jesus said. If you tell this mountain to be moved, it will be moved for you. Why? Because God's love is greater. We have the power because we have God's love. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out all fear. This is what we're talking about. Cast out some fear. All fear. Cast out some sins. 
all sins. That's why it's greater eh. Kasi covers all eh. Cast out fear. Because the fear involved, fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. What do you mean by perfected in love? Well, you have not made it manifest. God's love is perfect. I'm telling you, God's love is perfect. Downloaded in your spirit, the Holy Spirit tells you, through the Word of God, it's being brought out. But it needs to be perfected in your mind, in your soul, in your emotion, in your body. How? By renewing your mind. In the body, how? By obeying God's Word. Claro ba? So we need to have a good understanding of the body, soul, and spirit. All of these, the perfection happens in our spirit, but the manifestation of it must happen in our soul and body, mind, emotion, uh, memories, etc. You have to submit your soul and body to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that resides in, the spirit, in your spirit. And once you do that, once you draw it, oh, I used to be afraid of this, you know, I'm going to think about God's love. I'm not afraid anymore. That's it. That's how you process it. Oh, I'm used to be afraid of the future. I'm going to go back to the Bible. Jesus said, do not worry about tomorrow. Oh, he said, do not worry about tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to hold on it. I'm going to renew my mind. I'm not going to worry about tomorrow. Once you process it, make it perfect in your mind, then you manifest it in your mind, your body, then you will not be afraid of the future anymore. Claro ba? So, I, I, I'm afraid that uh, I will not have food tomorrow. And then you read the Bible in Matthew. Well, look at the birds in the sky. They, have, they don't sow, they don't reap, but the Lord provides for them. Are, you more, are they more precious than you? And then you process it in your mind. You have a revelation from the Holy Spirit. You download what the Holy Spirit is telling you through the Word of God. And then you make it manifest, you make it perfect in love. Claro? Next, now we have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. Come to know first, and then what? Believe. This is exactly what I'm saying. God is using the Holy Spirit to speak through the Word of God. And once that, once you have that knowing, ginosko, the knowing that really, really know, knowing that you know that you know. Like nothing can make you doubt what you know. That is the kind of knowing that God wants you. That nobody can shake it away from you. That's knowing. There is a kind of knowing that is still subject to what? Subject to doubt. That is not the kind of knowing that God wants you to have. He wants you to have that knowing, the ginosko knowing, that is never subject to doubt. Because you know it works. Even if I don't see it, even if I don't feel it, it works. My body can lie to me. My mind can lie to me. The Bible says that your heart is deceitful above all else. So if my heart is deceitful above all else, then I need to hold on to something that is more sure. The Word of God is sure. And so if I put my knowing into the Word of God, then I will have that ginosko knowledge and then I will believe. We have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love and the one who abides in love abides in God and God abides in Him. Like, grabe, dikit eh. Nakikita niyo ba yung gusto ni God? Parang, uh, you know, yes, come here. God is like, uh, He's not satisfied with just pre me preaching and you're sitting there. You know what? This word that I'm speaking according to the word of God, Receive this word not as from anlayo natin, but God is like, dude, like, like you know, God is really, what do you call that? Super, super what? Super close. Yeah, He wants your breath. Ruach. Spirit. That's why the Holy Spirit is a spirit. He wants you to breathe in, breathe Him. The air that you breathe, that's, that's, God wants you to have that. God wants you, the Word of God, God loves you. To, and then when, when you walk in the streets, like, you know, I'm so proud of my son. He's shouting, I'm so proud of this guy. I love this guy. And then if he's afraid, how can he be afraid if God is like, you know, how can he be afraid? 
Thank, thanks, bud. So, you know, you know my kids, I love hugging them. Every morning, I hug them. Sila na lang mismo yung, too much, daddy, too much. But you know what? God, love, God is like that to us. And God wants you to experience that kind of love. Sarap, grabe. By this, love is perfected with us so that we may have the confidence in the day of judgment. He didn't say so that we may fear the day of judgment. So again, if other people are preaching the end times and it, you become fearful, then they, their delivery is wrong. Either their understanding is wrong or their delivery is wrong. The end time should excite you. The end time should make you do the works of God, do greater works. Darating na si Lord. Tara! Salubungin natin. Magdala pa tayo ng mga tao. Tara! Para kang yung uh, Samaritan woman. The Lord is here. He told me everything that's wrong with me. But you know what? Tara! Sinama niya yung buong bayan. Wow! That's the kind of love. If you really understood, that is the kind of confidence in the day of judgment because as He is, oh my goodness, get so better. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. It didn't say we will become like Jesus when we go to heaven. It starts here. It starts here. When we go to heaven, the only thing that will change is our body. But our spirit remains the same. Our soul, yes, it will be... You know the reason why our soul will be changed there? Because it will have full revelation of the things that we have not seen before. And so when we go there, ah, ito pala yun. Oh my goodness. But your spirit already knows that. Ikaw na lang ang hindi mo naiintindihan yun. So here... As Jesus is, so are we in this world. How do we apply that? If Jesus was fearless in this world, then I can be fearless in this world. If Jesus was loved in this world, then I would know that I am loved in this world. Medyo lamang pa nga tayo kay Jesus eh. Bakit? Kasi He was God the Father sacrificed Him on the cross to save us. Di lamang tayo. Pero in terms of divinity, of course, lamang si Jesus. No, no question about that. What I'm saying is that Jesus made Himself humble by being a human. Can you imagine an immortal dying a mortal's life by choice so that He can save you and me? Somebody who has not feel pain from the beginning of time, He has not felt Pain, physical pain. Subject him himself in pain through what? The men who hated him. I don't know what, what love, if you, if you have not, no concept of love, that, that, that should give you a picture of true love of Jesus. He has subjected himself. God subjected himself in a human form. Died at the hands of sinners like you and me. Worse. Sinners. And then he said, Lord, forgive them. They do not know what they were doing. Dying for them on the cross. That is the kind of love. Now, if I understood that kind of love, why will I sin against my Savior? It is the goodness of God that brings me to repentance. The, the more I understand His goodness, the more I understand His love, the more I don't want to sin anymore. Yes. God's love conquers all your fears. It says here, who will separate us from the love of God? Will tribulation, will distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, and sword. Well, I want you to know that God does not exempt us from all these. It will come not because God is the one bringing it to you, it will come because the people who hate God and the enemy who hates God will bring it upon you. But it doesn't mean that God is the one willing it to happen to you. And so that is the reason why the Bible says, will all these things separate us from the love of God? God cannot be the one 
bringing these things and loving us at the same time. Labu nun. He's loving. He will sustain you through all these things. In fact, he said, but in all these things, in some of these things, in all these things, that's why it's greater, we what? Overwhelmingly conquer through Him who loved us. How do we conquer? Overwhelmingly? Through Jesus who loved us. So what do we need to do? We need to have an understanding of God's love. You will not be a conqueror in this world. You will forever be broken. You will forever be depressed. You will forever be sad, lonely, feeling mo kawawa ka if you have not understood the love of God. Because the only way for us to overwhelmingly conquer is to understand that He loves us. That's why God's love is greater. For I am convinced. Are you convinced? Are you convinced? Kasi kung di kayo convinced, you will easily get depressed. Including death. If you're easily convinced, you're, you'll be fearful about life. You'll be fearful about the future. You'll be fearful to share the gospel. Because you're not convinced. You're not really convinced. But if you're convinced, what are we convinced of? For I am convinced. I will not let Paul, siya lang yung convinced, ako hindi. I convinced din ako. So Paul is saying here, oh, I, I don't know about you, but as far as me, I'm convinced. Are you convinced? That's what Paul is saying. I'm, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come. So your circumstances, your future circumstances, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Now question, is there anything that is not created? Only God. If God is for us, who can be against us? That's what it means. Anything that is created, God is greater because He's the creator. Eh? If God is for you, who can be against you? Romans 8. In, in fact, it's the, in, the same, uh, in, in the same chapter. Romans 8.31. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered for, um, for us, uh, f- he delivered him for us all. How will he not also give us all things? The love of God. No one is able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. As far as God's love for you, it's all being given. God will not separate His love for you. The question is, are you receiving it? Are you separating yourself from the love of God? That's another, well, that's a choice that you can make. It's a wrong choice. Why would I separate myself from the love of God? I will swim in the love of God. Absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of God. Now, How about our needs? So we talked about greater than sins. God's love is greater than sins. God's love is greater than fears. Do you know that God's love is greater than all your needs? What's our proof? He who did not spare His own Son but delivered Him for us all, how will He not also with Him freely give us all things? All things. What you need, given. I've experienced it. Lisa and I have experienced it. I want you to experience it. Hindi po kami nagmamayabang. Nandito po kami, excited po kami na maranasan nyo rin. Once you hold on to that word of God and you have a revelation that you know, that you know, that you know, boom, you will experience it. Philippians 4.19, kung hindi, ka sap- hindi pa sapat yung verse na yun, he said this, My God will supply some of your needs, only the needs in the ministry, only in the needs of the church. Hindi, ang sabi niya, God will supply all your needs according to His riches in the glory of Jesus. So if you do not believe that God can supply all your needs, then you are not thinking that God loves you, number one. Number two, you are thinking that God is poor. 
Si Jo, ang Diyos ay what? Pulube. Ang Diyos ay kuripot. But what does the Bible say? His riches. He will draw from His riches and give it to you and supply what you need. That's why He said, approach the throne of grace with confidence so that you will receive grace in the time of need. What do you approach? The throne of Kuripot? The throne of lack? Are you approaching a throne of brokenness? You are approaching a a throne of grace so that you will what? Receive what you need in time of need. Speaking about brokenness, God's love is greater than your greatest brokenness. What does the Bible say? The righteous cry, the Lord hears. Who's the righteous? Me. Can you say me? In Jesus. Not our own righteousness, but Jesus' righteousness. So we're righteous. And when we, the, when we cry, when you cry, when the righteous cry, what does it say? The Lord hears and delivers them out of some of their troubles. Will he leave? Ne, I leave Ethan. I will leave you some of trouble, not all, because to teach you something, you still need to learn something from that trouble. So I will not deliver you from that. Is that how God treats us? No. He said, the moment you cry, you will be delivered from all your troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. Yes, you approach God broken, but once you approach God, He will make you whole. You're not broken anymore. And saves those who are crushed in spirit. Crushed in spirit is actually a form of depression. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. It's true. Yes, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But it didn't stop there. The Lord delivers him out of them all. In this world, you will have trouble. But it doesn't stop there. Take heart. I have overcome the world. God is the solution to brokenness. He's not the source. Time and time again in the Bible, people come to Him broken. Once they believe, what happens? They become, they were made whole. People approach Him sick. Once they touch Jesus, they become made whole. Sinners go to Him, they become made whole. Depressed goes to Him, they become made whole. (laughs) You cannot remain the same once you experience Jesus. Otherwise, what kind of God is He if He'll not do anything for your problem? Uh, Yeah. This one is good. God's love is greater than our greatest desires. We've talked about the other kinds of love, yes? And oftentimes, those kinds of love prevents us from really appreciating the agape love of God. Because distracting eh. Diba? Pag na-inlove ka sa isang tao na hindi naman mahal sa ang Diyos, si God, then madidistract ka ng taong yon. And so what, what, is, what, is, what does God's love do? He will align your desire to a good desire, to a desire that would bless you, to a desire that would make you whole, to a desire that would bring life to you. That is the reason why in 1 John also, he said, do not love the world. That's the wrong kind of love. Do you know that you can experience the wrong kind of love? By choosing to love the world. Do not love the world nor the things of the world. The moment you love the things of the world, that's the wrong kind of love. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. It's not being made manifested. So what does it mean? The love of the Father is being poured out to us, yes? But if we start looking at the world, then you will not be able to experience God's love because you are wanting to be satisfied with the world love, yes? So now, all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, how does the world make you love it? Through the flesh. The loss of the eyes, through the eyes. Be careful. Right? The boastful pride of life is not from the Father, 
but is from the world. So be careful with your eyes. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the what? The Father up above. What? Looking down in love. Be careful with your eyes. Be careful, little child, on what you see. I messed up the, the lyrics. Look at this. The love of money is the root of all sorts of evil. So there are loves that should not be loved. There are loves that you should give up. Yes? So that you can experience the agape kind of love. One of those things that you need to let go is the love of money because it will just what? Attract evil. It is the root of all evil. And some, by longing for it, have wandered away from faith. These are believers. They've wandered far from faith, but because of the love of money, they are not able to experience the love of God. And they what? What happened? They became broken. So don't tell God that God is breaking you. You made a choice to love money. Now that you're bankrupt, now that you're, it has pierced you with many griefs, don't tell God, God, you allowed this to happen. No, you made a choice. Eh? God is giving you a choice. Do not love money. What does he say? But flee from these things. Flee. The love of God teaches you to flee from these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. God will not make that choice for you. God is greater than all. Last two verses. So God is greater than our sins. God is greater than our fears. God is greater than our needs. God is even greater than our desires. God is greater than all. And this is my prayer to you. And I pray that you will have a revelation. So Lord Jesus, give me a revelation. Ask them. Ask Him. That He would grant you. Again, according to the riches of His glory. He wants to give. He's generous. God is a generous God. According to the riches of glory. To be strengthened with the power. Through His Spirit in the inner man. The inner man that God is talking about here is your spirit. And God wants to empower you through the Holy Spirit. God wants you to experience His power. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Why? God is saying the power in your spirit has been downloaded already there. Now in your heart, which is what? Your mind. When, when the Bible talks about the heart, it talks about the mind. It's not... It's not the, the heart here. It talks about the, the mind. So that Christ will dwell in your hearts. It will be made manifest. Who you are in your spirit will be made manifest in your mind through faith. That you being rooted and grounded. Again, you see the word love. That's, that's the roots. That's where, we, that's where the, we get the nutrition. If the soil is good, the what? The tree is good, the fruit is good, yes? So when you see rooted and grounded in love, God, God wants you to be rooted in His love, in the agape love. Because that's the only thing that is secure in this world. May be able to comprehend with all the saints. Beautiful, beautiful. Don't, don't miss this one. Huh? What is the breadth, the length, the height, the depth, and to know the love of Christ, which is greater, surpasses knowledge that you may be filled up to the fullness of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, let's go back to it again a little bit. It says that who can separate us from the love of God? Shall death or life, angels, principalities, height or depth? Misan takot ka sa height, misan takot ka sa depth, yes? But what does the love of God do? It says here, God wants you to understand the breadth, the length, the height, and depth. Why is it? You're afraid of height and depth. Yes? Many of us are afraid of all these things, height and depth. Why? Because we have not understood the breadth, the length, the height, 
You know, yung kinakatakutan mo lang, eto eh. Ganto lang kataas. Pero yung love ni God is abot langit. Lagpas langit nga eh. That's what God is wanting you to do. He wants you to totally comprehend His love for you and me. Isn't God amazing? Now to Him who is able to do far more abundantly. Far na nga. More pa. Abundant pa. Beyond pa. All pa. Pambira. Isn't God's love greater? That's what I'm talking about. Far na, more pa, abundant pa, beyond all that we ask or think. Do you know that God's love is beyond what you ask or think? His provision is beyond what you ask or think. His courage is beyond what you ask or think. His power is beyond what you ask or think. Your future is beyond what you ask for think. His love for you is far more abundantly beyond all that you ask or think. According to the power, this is good, this is good, it gets better. According to the power that works around us, outside us, it is within us. It is already there. It has been downloaded in your spirit already. Align your mind in the Word of God so you can unleash it. So you can make it manifest. Renew your mind. Do not conform into the patterns of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you will know what the will of God is. His good, perfect, and pleasing will. That's it. That's it. That's the power that's worked within us. Align your mind. Renew your mind. To Him, Amen. Be the glory in the church. Oh Lord Jesus, thank you. In Christ Jesus to all generations. Forever and ever. Amen. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Sarap grabe. Sarap grabe. Look. Understand God's love. The manifestation of the power that works within us, according to that verse, is actually directly proportional to our understanding of God's love for us. Proportional yan. You will not, the more you know God's love, the more you understand the power that is working in you. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for your greater love for us. Lord Jesus, you're a good God. You're not only a great Savior, you're a great provider, you're a great healer, you're a great deliverer, you're a great Lord. And because you are Lord of all, we bow down, Lord Jesus. And we confess that Jesus is Lord. The Bible says that at the end times, every knee will bow down and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Lord, we do it now. We can't wait to see you. Lord, we'll do it now. If you are that person right now and who want to understand the love of God, bow down at the feet of Jesus. I encourage you, bow down at the feet of Jesus. You will do it at the end times. But right now, why not do it right now? He deserves all glory, all honor, all praise. Lord Jesus, all that we can say to all these good, greater things, to this greater love is thank you. We cannot repay it. We cannot do anything to obtain it. You have given it freely. All we have to do is receive it and thank you. Lord Jesus, we receive, receive, receive. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for who you are. Thank you, Father, that you are a loving Father. Thank you that you are a loving God. 
If there's anyone here who wants to know God more, I encourage you to bow down at your knees right now. If you are that person, bow at your knees. You're sitting. But if you want to know God more, just bow down. Make it manifest in your mind. It's not a religious thing. It is a worship thing. Lord Jesus, all you, you, you see these people bowing down. Father, I pray that you will give them more revelation, Lord Jesus. That they will really understand the power that is within them through the Holy Spirit that you have given us through Christ. Father, I pray that you will use this church mightily. Use them individually. Use their family so that we may bring this love of God we will introduce them to your love, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray a special anointing for each and every person here that you will just release them, Father God. Release their mind and their heart so that they will really understand your love and that love will flow through their mouth. It will flow through their hands, Lord Jesus. Father, we understand that your love is greater than all our sins. And so if there's anybody here who does not have Jesus yet, who does not have a relationship with Jesus yet, say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I submit to you. I confess to you all my sins. I know that you have paid for it 100% on the cross. It has been dealt with, Lord Jesus. My past, my present, my future sins has been dealt with completely. So, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior and I surrender to you as my Lord. Come into my heart. Make known to me the power of your love and your salvation. Use me mightily. And maybe some people here are afraid of the future. I declare that the love of God has power over that also. Has power over your fears. You do not have to worry. You do not have to to, to be depressed. You do not have to be hopeless. Hope is here. Hope is found in Jesus and it is within you if you have Him in your heart. Those of you who have been praying about provisions, I want you to know that God's love is greater than your needs. So in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, I release in Jesus' name. Blessings upon blessings upon you. Prosperity beyond that you can imagine. Prosperity not just for you, but you will use it for His kingdom in Jesus' name. You will use it to bless other people. The Bible says that we need to use our worldly wisdom to gain friends so that they can welcome us in the heavenly kingdom. I pray that God will use you in your wealth so that you can bring more people to Christ. And I pray, Lord Jesus, also, if there's any desire that is not aligned with your agape love, if there's any other love, if there's lust, infidelity, promiscuity, any other love, love for money, any other love, love addiction, Love for the self. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, we come against it. Bow down at the feet of Jesus. We cast you out. Surrender it to the Lord right now. So that He will replace, replace those false love with the agape love right now. Father, I pray for each and every person here that they will also, from the top of their head to the sole of their feet, they will experience your warm embrace. They will experience your security. They will experience the love and the peace that transcends all understanding right now. Father, comfort, comfort, comfort. Lord, I know that this is your will. Comfort, comfort, oh my people. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray the same thing. Give them comfort, the peace, life, shalom, sozo, in Jesus' name. 
God's love is greater than your sickness. If there's anybody here who's sick, touch that part of the body. I declare healing over that part of the body right now. And may God's love in Jesus' name completely heal you according to the fullness, the greatness of His love. This I pray in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you.